Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on episodes 9 and 10 of Sailor Moon Crystal. Okay, these last two episodes have been full to the brim with exposition and feels. Lots of feels. There are a couple times where I'm like, I'm almost tearing up. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Starcross lovers and... Oh, they just finally remembered and now he's taken away and... Stop poking my feels button! Stop it! <laughs> <laughs> and the four kings starting to remember and the other princesses remembering they were dating the four kings and now everybody's fighting. It's so sad. <laughs> oh, we almost had that thing, I can't fight you because I love you, and then realization like, well, if we fight them and knock them out... <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, just... There's also so much backstory going on, so much finding out why this is happening, and then we get this whole thing about, well, we have to find our new purpose now, and why we are now on Earth. <laughs> and also, Evil Enemon. <laughs> I think I said that name correctly. Because if not, it sounds like a Pokemon. Not Pokemon, Digimon. <laughs> um, yeah, that sounded a lot like a Digimon. It's, uh, Indimon. Indimon. Still sounds like a Pokemon, but moving on! <laughs> not Digimon. God damn it! <laughs> And I'm still saying it wrong because apparently I've said it wrong my whole life because in this version they say Endymion. <laughs> Have oh. to remember that. Endymion. Hmm. Still sounds like a Digimon. Hey, I got it right that time. <laughs> 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 yeah, but unlike any of the Digimon I've ever seen, I totally want to date Endymion. <laughs> Endymion. <laughs> hey, the evolutions of... um. Those two for the kids looked pretty human when they fully evolved, and I think they were kind of nice looking. You know, like Angie Do they Wuhan. have a tuxedo and a rose? No. <laughs> <sighs> uh. So let me hear more of your thoughts on these, on these episodes. Uh, well, they, they feel very slow moving because we're not really having much progression. We're finally getting to the explanation and the exposition. Because we've had all this air quotes here because most people know the story, I would think, since this is the third iteration. So now we're getting all the whys and hows and, hey, let's go to the moon and we can have more flashbacks and we can have more touching scenes and we can vow that it's not going to be the same this time. I also like how we actually got like certain positions for the Sailor Scouts when they were not just her guardians, but they also did stuff like it makes sense that Amy would be the teacher, the tutor for Princess Serenity. Mm -hmm. Which makes me think that Jupiter was probably her main martial arts trainer. Or cook. <laughs> or both. Yeah. <laughs> And I always get the feeling that Venus and her were like best friends, not just like they're you know closer than the others in the group. Mm. I think uh, canonically that's actually Rei and Usagi. Mm. I don't remember if it's canonical in the manga, but in the first iteration of the TV series, even though they turned Rei into a witch for no reason for a while, if you actually listen to the Japanese voice acting, they usually leave the Chan off of the end of each other's names. Hmm. So they're actually addressing each other more familiarly. Hmm. I love how they're doing more of that background stuff in these episodes. It's giving more time for us to enjoy the characters and really understand them because the show's been so paced. We haven't had individual episodes really where we really dive into the characters. We've been introduce Usagi, introduce Amy, introduce Rei, introduce Jupiter, then Venus. There, there really hasn't been any episodes in between introducing all the characters. It's been boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Which has been a nice fast pacing and now we're like getting caught up and even though it's a lot of exposition basically two episodes in a row of exposition with the flashbacks we're still getting some eye candy it's not all talking heads i mean even the presentation of the stuff before the flashbacks or introducing the flashbacks like how pulling the sword out i'm like i don't remember a sword being in this but that's cool <laughs> Yeah, we didn't include the sword in the original anime. The stone sword was more in the manga. And I love how Usagi's mom just glossed over the fact that she suicided, but we very clearly get to see that. And then switching sides and cutting back over to the four kings, all looking at Endymion going, Does he seem familiar? I don't know. He seems familiar. Are... <laughs> 
I'm not sure. Maybe he seems familiar. And then Coon's <laughs> like, no, I don't know him. And then they follow Queen Beryl and went, this is interesting. They're about to get all their memories back. We're about to get our memories back. Oh my god, we got our memories back. <laughs> and then Queen Beryl, oh, look at that. You got your memories back. Sorry. Denied. <laughs> and then Venus, oh, we almost got their memories back. Dang, so close. <laughs> Missed it by this much. Yeah, these episodes, the exposition is nice, the character building is nice, the slower pace is nice, because we've been basically marathoning by pacing up to this point, and now we've slowed down to give some really needed explanation about how certain things working. Though, in my real-world mind, <laughs> I'm going, wait a minute, if this stuff's been on the moon, <laughs> since they're kind of pacing this more modern times, we've already been there. <laughs> Yeah, well, consider how long ago the moon landing was. We'd already been to the moon when the original manga was written. Mm -hmm. And if I recall, no, that doesn't seem right. I was going to say, I think it's on the far side of the moon. You know, the it's uh, In this episode, they specifically said they landed in the, um, oh, it's, like, it's, like, it's something Serenity or something like that. It's actually the name of an actual crater up in the moon. It's actually the spot where I believe they actually had the moon landing. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm thinking maybe you have to have the blood of a silver millennial in order to see it. That or the ruins actually um, hide themselves in a different way. I was going to say like they pop out of the ground, but I was like, they didn't show that at all. So I'm guessing the whole hiding thing you just came up with work. <laughs> That's a viable explanation. Moving on! <laughs> <laughs> and nitpick for episode 9. Her hair didn't really look longer. And Usagi's hair really doesn't look any shorter than Princess Serenity's hair. I don't get it. <laughs> also, like, oh, let's, just, let's cut some off to make it more manageable. That's not a lot you cut off there. You just did it up in her classic, you know, meat bun style. So, yeah. <laughs> Yet you see on the ground, like, a foot of hair has been cut off. Speaking of technical things like that, you notice something really kind of painful to you in episode 10. Yeah, translation issues. Not that I can speak Japanese, so accuracy of translation is not something I can address. But the syntax and grammar of the translation we got in episode 10, those were not complete grammatical correct sentences. Yeah, I didn't really pick up on it for most of the episode, except for one part where, where I think Jupiter was saying something, and it hit me like, wow, that is just, that, that, that's not the right word you used there. It was either the, not the right version of the word, or they got a word that means things similar to the word they wanted, but <laughs> yeah. And the only way we can explain this is they are releasing these at the same time, I believe as in Japan, so the translators have to work really quickly. And I guess this one got passed through the quality checking station a little too quickly for them to catch errors like that, because apparently they've been pretty good from your standard. There have been a few minor things in the earlier episodes, mainly with uh, Queen Beryl or Queen Metallia. And they were small things like a singular form of a word where I would have used a plural and the absence of English joining words like is, and, and. Let's just hope they fix all of this on the DVD Blu-ray set that comes out. I would really like that because I'm hoping that they aren't just going to use these subs as is because they've already done them. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, what's the point of people picking up the DVD Blu-ray set if they've already watched everything in the exact quality that it's going to be? And I hope they also give us a dub treatment as well. That would definitely be nice. Considering they also have, they already have voice actors for all the characters, they can just move them over from the redubbing of the original Sailor Moon that's come out. Now, since everyone's already cast, and both shows are licensed through the same company in the U.S. So, anything more on these particular episodes? Oh, I have one. I like the, oh, we finally get to see the Sailor Planet attack or something like that. Mm-hmm. The name suddenly got lost on me. <laughs> it's like, so, okay, it's a healing attack. I remember it being a kind of powerful blasting attack. It could be a purity. Also, I never knew that each of the um, knights had their own kind of theme to them. I don't remember that from the manga, but it's very interesting. And if it was in the manga, I like it. And if it wasn't in the manga, I like it. <laughs> That's good. 
So what we actually need to do, air quotes on need, is match up each knight's description with each scout's description that they give in their intro. Because we haven't heard those intros for a little while, because we don't get a lot of reused transformation sequence, so we don't get the introductory phrase each time. Also, I like how badass Uchagi's been getting. I'm like, she's getting more and more confident and more powerful, as it were. And it's just like, ooh, she's getting badass. I like this. <laughs> I also went, you know, this whole flying at outer space thing and using it to go over the entire city is kind of overdoing it. But I'm okay with it. It looked cool. <laughs> yeah, didn't really need to get that high up, but... You know, the blackness of space made a better background for showing off her protective shield than the blue you would have expected if she was lower in the atmosphere. I must say, I really like the visual effects in this series so far. They do a pretty good job on most of it. The only thing that me and you both agree on that we found a minute before is some of the transformations were like, eh. <laughs> There's something off about the CG here. <laughs> But overall, I just got better with each scout that was introduced. Yeah, you know, because I still prefer some of you know, like Venus and Jupiter's transformations over um, the earlier transformations, specifically Sailor Moon's. Just something seems the most off about hers. Mm hmm But, you know, that transformation footage hasn't gotten the type of reuse that we're used to in an anime series. So I really enjoyed that they've minimize the transformation sequence reuse footage, though we've had plenty of flashback reuse footage as we've had, you know, the same set of angry weapons and pitchforks, you know, in several different color tones for several different people's flashbacks. And the same reuse of the Endemion scene where he keeps getting slashed in the back by who would become Queen Beryl. Mm -hmm. It's like, how many times do we have to cut this poor boy in the back, man? We get the point! Oh, we understand. And cutting close to the end of episode 10 with Queen Beryl using her power, well, technically Queen Metalia's power, to take over Mamoru, I was like, get your hands off of him! <laughs> Yeah, I don't think that was ever kind of hinted at in other places, but it looks like they're hinting at that she also has an attraction to him, which might explain why she was vulnerable to being uh, influenced by the evil entity back in the previous time period. Yeah, because she had unrequited feelings for him, and instead of choosing her, who was probably a princess of Earth, you have him choosing the princess of the moon. And so then you have the voice of Queen Metalia whispering quietly in her ear that, Oh, just overthrow the Moon Kingdom and get the Silver Crystal and then you can have him. Wow, this sounds a lot like Hyrule Warriors. <laughs> uh, fun game, we should talk about another time. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, any final thoughts? We needed the exposition, and I think the timing was good because it gives us a little bit of a break. But things are going to start ramping up again if you look at the preview for episode 11. Because now we're dealing with Dark Mamaru. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's going to be fun. And I really like how they took the time to slow down here because this is a good point to slow down. Because we just got finished with the introducing of everyone and getting the main story set up. And now we can transition into the period of where we're starting to wrap up things. Because from what I understand, this season is 26 episodes long. So in another three episodes, we'll be at the halfway point. I'm still really enjoying the special effects, the visual effects in this episode. I like how we got a chance to slow down to get more background and more feelings. Feelings! So overall, I really hope they continue with this quality and hopefully increase the quality for the text so it doesn't bug living heck out of poor Ember. <laughs> <laughs> and poor anyone else who likes to watch subtitles or poor everyone right now because we can only watch it subbed at the moment. Mm -hmm. This has been our thoughts on Sailor Moon Crystal, Episodes 9 and 10. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed my art and want to see more, please visit me on DeviantArt and Tumblr. Want to keep track of what Lux and I are up to? You can follow us on Tumblr. If you really enjoy Lux's art and would like some of your own, he's currently open for commissions. All links are in the description. Kitten has been very kitten today. <laughs> ninja skills of annoyance? <laughs> or ninja skills of, I'm cute, look at me!
Uh, I'm cute, look at me. Cuddle with me, pet me. I'm going to be in your lap and I'm going to dig my claws in to keep myself in place, but I'm not going to let you trim my claws. Ninja escape ability. <laughs> ah, I'm glad the cat's at least not annoying you too much. <laughs> <laughs> it's more of the I'm being cute and less of the I'm doing stuff you don't want me to do. <laughs> okay, where were we? Yeah, we were at me yawning. <laughs> you can follow us on Twitter. Tumblr. What did I say? You said Twitter. Damn it!